A one and a two. Good to be in church, amen. amen. I like it. I like it. I could have never grown up in Miami. I could have never imagined myself hanging with you. I would have hung with you probably before some of you got saved. Some of you, what little I know about you, we'd probably be all right together. But if you were all carrying a Bible around and want to talk about the Lord, my, I'd get a cold. <coughs> my, scr- my throat would be scratchy. All right. Uh, we'll go to uh, go over the uh, seven churches. and uh, I, I don't think we'll finish late. Uh, Philadelphia tonight, but we will go as far as we can. All right, uh, my wife, uh, my bride there, pray for her, obviously, please, because uh, she's up there in uh, Orlando with the CCS crew, and uh, she she brought this to me the other day, and she's she does uh, Spanish classes with the kid, the older kids, and then uh, art with the younger ones or something like that. I know she does art in Spanish. So she handed me this, and this was from one of my students back in the day. I won't mention his name for sake of confidentiality, HIPAA. But this is what it says, and it, it uh, definitely made my year so far. There, there, there are several things that, that, that have made my year, and, and basically what that is, if, if, if you're mindful of why it is you do what you do, and if there's an expectation like we have in America for media gratification, so I show up to church one time, and I don't know why my whole life hadn't turned back around. I read two chapters of Bible, and I can't figure out why my wife hadn't come back or whatever. Uh, yeah, but that's been 15 years of playing the fool, right? So, so it'll take some time. So you keep plugging at it, right, chipping away. We say, how you doing, Pastor? I say, I'm chipping away. They're like, huh? Then you got to explain the concept, you know? So the, so the seven dwarfs say, seven dwarfs, dwarfs? Can you say dwarf in America anymore still? Or no? Get a phone call, get another comment. And so they sing this song. Dig, 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 dig. And that's what we're doing. We're, we're planning, planning. I don't know. Probably not. So anyway, here's what it says. Amen. Uh, Dear Pastor Barnett, it's been a while and I still do remember you. Amen. It's been about a year and a half. No, about a year. Uh, I still do remember you and all the good things you did for me and for the school. I want to thank you for teaching us how to be a better man for God. And I did, I did, I, I, I honestly, I did. And, and uh, I, I try to teach those young people how to, the young man to be a young man and the young ladies how to be a young lady, amen, because they're not, they're not being taught that. And so, anywho, I can't say he, my bad. Uh, to, how to be a better man for God and for my family, even though I only had you for a year and a half. You still managed to teach me so much about the Lord and about life, and you've been one of the best teachers I've ever had. Me and all my friends still miss you and still talk about you to this day, and we still think that what the administration did to you was unfair. Anyway, uh, everything happens for a reason, and your wife told me, that you're doing very good doing pastor full time full time i'm very happy for you and hope to see you again soon you're the man pastor be safe and say what does that do for you it's uh it's nice because sometimes you know there's nothing wrong with uh you you would consider everything that you do as a man or as a young lady as a young person am i on the right path am i doing the right thing you know, because uh, so-and-so said that you offended him. So-and-so said, yeah, but, but, but oftentimes the gospel is offensive. You remember what they did to your Savior? And it's not that you come into the, to a point and, and to be a jerk and, and, you know, just defend everybody that you could see. There's, there's a balance in how you approach people, but never compromise truth. And what happens in America today, the reason why there's no strength in any churches today is because they're, they're just playing games. The pastor is playing this game with his crew. I'm going to preach just enough Bible so that at the end, like at the end of my 20 minutes, and we'll sing for, for an hour and a half, but, but when I get up there, I'll preach for 20 minutes, and I'll make sure I don't say anything that's too offensive to you, and that way... You could leave out of here with maybe the understanding of you came to church and got a little some song. 
Now, your your role in this game to me is make sure you pad my pockets, amen, and uh, we go that route, and we'll just build the kingdom here and build build back better, you know, whatever whatever they whatever they talk. So look, God's in what we're doing. We got all this this building going on. We got more uniforms, or we got this going on. And then you would ask, and you know, you'd pray for open doors because you're an American, and you'd say, so where did all this come from, Lord? Some guy, some rich Christian guy, and you'd be like, no, nah, they're all from government grants and stuff. <laughs> so you have to be very careful about that. But at the same time, just do you. You're going to be all right, right? Amen? You guys are all right. Just do you. And God sees what you're doing, and, and every once in a while, he give you a little nod, right? A little bump, right? We got three couch sets in my house. If you guys come to my house, I got three couch sets. It looks like uh, look, look like Badcock over in my house, right? And my wife's like, we got to get rid of some. I'm like, man, I clean the carpets and stuff. It looks good. So you guys, are we doing Friday? Is it this Friday? Okay, so you guys can sit on any one of those couches, man. You can, I'll take a picture. This is me over here. All right, Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. It's good to be saved. It's good to, to be in the book. Amen. It's good to have the liberty in a country like ours. And you need to make sure you're thankful. You know, I don't always agree what goes on in the country. But you say, well, you hate America. No, I don't. I love America. I am an American, amen? And and how do you prove that, Pastor? Well, it's not by a bunch of talk like typically the, the patriots do and put skulls with American flags on your truck and all that. I don't need no skull, beheaded people and all that, you know, uh, decapitated. Anyway, I don't need dead body parts on my, on my car with an American flag on it to prove my patriotism. I preach. That's what proves my patriotism, amen? I care so much about people in America, and I don't really care if you're legal or not. That I tell you about Jesus Christ, and we got we got Spanish tracks and English tracks and and some Creole tracks. How about that one? Okay, and so that's that. The rest of them are all talk. All these tough fellas, they want to get these seventy thousand dollar trucks, you know, and jack them up and put uh, Confederate flags on them. Although you probably can't do that. You can put a sodomite flag, but you can't fly one in because we, we anyway. Uh, you, you put all your American flags on it and do whatever and all your skulls and get pictures of guns. But I know little kids that, that have more courage than them fellas right there because the little kid that's in Sunday school that, that, that learned to love Jesus Christ can hand, hand another person a gospel track where Rambo over here, he would never come out of that truck. He, he ain't going to, he'd be scared to death. Amen. And that's that. That's the proof in the pudding. That's David. See, it's not the, the outward appearance. That ain't it. It ain't this big dude with all the tatted up. You got now you tatting on your face like a fool. And one day there'll be a forty year old in that body if the Lord tarries. By the way, anyway, and, and you look silly when you do it. And then you get offended when people look at you. But you did you did that so everybody look at you. So if you're gonna be, if you're gonna be stupid, you gotta be tough. Okay, you make whatever. There's a term there. There's a little saying there. I, I don't know if I hit it right, but anyway. Uh, before we get too far, I said Revelation 3. Let's go on a rabbit trail for a second. Uh, let's look at Psalms 119 real quick, and uh, we'll get some Bible as much as we can tonight. But relax, it's okay. And uh, if you come into church and, and, and you don't feel antsy when you get out, the pastor didn't do his job. If you don't feel mean about something or a little disgusted, amen, uh, he didn't do his job right, I don't think. Because why would I drive, especially as far as some of you do, just to sit there to be stroked and and you know yourself you know that's a lie and then it'll be like oh let's just all smile at each other and you know it's kind of like them fake grapes that are like cotton candy you know and it's we we went to sprouts and it's supposed to be all natural you know sprouts well how do you get grapes to taste like cotton candy what chemical do you squirt in that one right or there's that one next to it is bubble gum and so you're telling me that's all natural or whatever, eh? No, I don't think so. I think the love of money is the root of all evil, man, and you cave. So that's all all that stuff. Suckers. Anywho. Uh, all right. Where am I at? Psalms chapter 119. Look at verse 165. Pray for my wife. I miss her. I, I could never be in this ministry without that lady right there. You say, do we argue? Uh, we, we bicker. We don't argue, man. That's petty stuff. We don't argue no more. When we first got married, maybe, had there ever been a time, Pastor, you don't talk to your wife for a few days or vice versa? Yeah, when we were little kids and didn't know enough Bible and we we just made stuff up like like people do. But, but we know now. 
we're good. And, and thank God Jesus Christ is in right in the middle of us, right there. And she's in love with him, and I'm in love with him, and we're in love with each other. That's the best way to do it, by the way. All right, uh, verse 165. So 119, 165. He says, Great peace have they which love thy law. Do we pray? Jared, go ahead, brother. Amen. So let's continue our expression here. One, 165, he says, Great peace are they which love thy law. So if you're, you're, you're into the, the peace stuff that passes all understanding, this is how you got to do You got to learn to love the law. What's the law today in 2000? It would be your Bible. It would be your Bible. That would be the equivalent of looking at that verse in the Old Testament and asking, so how does that apply today? That would be that. And then as a result, first things first. Right? First things first. Okay. Got to take the thing off the toothpaste first, and then, but don't not with the fluoride though. Careful. All right, and nothing shall offend them. What does it say? Nothing. nothing. That's what that says. Now you know the reality, right? You come in here already waiting to be offended. You all, you if if you're not doing right, I already know you already you kind of walking on eggshells. You know, you know, you you kind of here. You, you know, is the pastor going to say, is he going to say it? I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. I remember that pastor banging on the table. I told you he would say that. <laughs> Look at Proverbs, go backwards. Proverbs chapter 27. And and I'm not saying you'll never be offended, but if you are offended, there's, there's something wrong with you. See, because you do have the armor of God. That's New Testament, ain't it? So why you ain't putting it on? How about put it on and then and then keep moving forward, amen? And then get over it, right? I'm sure I'm sure you said stuff about other people before. Amen. Okay. All right. Well, maybe some God's in, in his sense of humor. You, you don't think God has a sense of humor. Huh? He puts up with you. That's funny. That's funny, man. He puts up with me. My wife will be like, yeah, hey, that's funny. Uh, yeah. All right. Look at Proverbs 27. Look at verse 7. The full soul loatheth in honeycomb. Right. That means he, he loathes it. He don't he want it full stuff. Right. But watch this. But to the hungry soul, like if you're really hungry to want to know God, you're really hungry, you want to know truth. This is this is this is what the Bible says. This is truth. See, this the word. This is truth. This Bible's truth. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, right? Amen. So he says, but to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. So, so that means if you come in through them doors or you're at home reading this book, amen, or you're out there talking to somebody else that reads this Bible and you're hungry for the truth, they're going to tell you something. And, and, and we've said this many times. They may say something you don't agree with and or you don't uh, don't understand. And then the key is how do you react to that? So how do you react to that? Do you do you do you cry out about bar? And then set the set set the guy's car on fire, or you know, you smash out his window. We're we're here for global climate change, and then you all all glue yourself to the dang street on rush hour while all these people, and then 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 you can't understand why the guy with the big truck goes through that dumb crowd because you're pulling people out of cars and stuff, and then and then when you start reaping what you sow, you get offended, all that. So if you got the right heart about it. Man, you you understand, acknowledge the fact that there's some things that you just gotta learn to do, and you don't know how to do it because you you weren't born learning how to ride, knowing how to ride a bike. You weren't. You had to learn how to do it. And you remember the times you flipped off the thing, or if you fall off the horse, you get back. That's what they say. Or if I'm you, I don't even get on a horse, right? All right, look at look at Proverbs 29. I ain't getting on that thing. I used to. Dangerous. All right, Proverbs, I'll wait for the millennium. How about that? <laughs> say, what are you talking about? Well, see, you got some learning to do, don't you? All right, Proverbs 29, look at verse 25. The fear of man bringeth the snare, but whosoever putteth his trust in the Lord shall be what? Safe. So here's Christianity today. We are afraid of our own shadows. We are afraid to open up our mouths. We're afraid to trust God in what? America today, Christians? Oh, yeah, what? What what are we? Everything. You're afraid to put the remote control down. You're afraid to put the phone down. 
you're afraid to pick up the Bible. You're afraid to pick up a track, amen, and pass it to a person that's in need. That's how the, it's the gospel, right? And uh, that's how you tell other people about Jesus Christ. So your pastor there up the road, well, he'll say, or she'll say, or it or they or them, or we are legion will say, is that you just let your light shine. You don't have to say nothing or point at the house like God get all them people saved and then run away. You know how the Christians do? Well, that's not that's not how that's supposed to work, amen. And you 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 you're you're in trouble because it's like, well, I'm scared to death of what mama might say or daddy might say or my neighbor might. You got to get over that, Christian, right? You got to get over that. You got to got to learn slowly, but surely. But you got to grow, right? And the fear and the admonition of the Lord. That's how you're supposed to raise your kids. That they're supposed to be that, amen. And and you can't be tripping over yourself all the time and scared of your own shadow all the time. And scared to represent. Don't be ashamed of Jesus Christ because when he was hanging naked on the cross, he was hanging, you know, because you see those pictures at Walmart, and you're like, no, he didn't, he, he got a suit on. No, that's just for decency's sake, they put a loincloth. But he was, make no mistake about it, that nakedness that he's warning you about, as far as the judgment seat of Christ is concerned, he took for you and was naked in front of all them people, right? He had nothing to hide. He ain't like Adam and Eve to cover themselves with the fig leaves and all that and then hide in the bushes. He's not like that. He's, he'll tell you like it is, right? And glory to God for him, right? I'm, I'm good. I, I'm okay with that, right? Look at, uh, go back to Psalms chapter 34. Psalms chapter 34. We're almost done with the infomercial. So Brother Kyle says, man, you see what they said about you online? It don't matter, but I've been called everything but. I've already been called everything but a child of God so far. And I've never really got hurt. My feelings got hurt a little bit. I, nobody likes being rejected, amen. But if you're going to stand for Jesus Christ, somebody's going to reject what you got to say. Amen. Somebody's going to reject. Somebody's going to going to have issue with your stand. So why are you with these guys there? Why are you with victory? Or why are you with that King James Bible stuff? Why are you there? Why? And and if you don't know how to grow into being that Christian soldier, then you're just going to be like a turtle all your life, man, or a gerbil. Like, so I don't want to be that. I want to be a soldier. So I, I, I missed out on a lot of stuff growing up. So I ain't missing out with Jesus Christ, though. I don't want to. And I've made a fool of myself because of my lack of willingness for a lot of years, amen, over and over. And then God gave me the space to repent, and I did. And, and I'm now catching up for making up, rather, for lost time. Psalms 34, look at verse 11. Psalms 34, look at verse 11. Come, ye children, right? Hearken unto me, right? I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Look at verse 9. Now look at verse 8. Oh, taste and see the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. You want some blessings? Learn to trust him. Verse 9. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me, and I'll teach you the fear of the Lord, which means it's not in you. So what you have in your natural self, you got two natures. You still have that unfortunate kind of side to you that want not, wants nothing to do with Jesus Christ. All right, look at uh, Psalms 86. And if you're a daddy, and you're a daddy, you'll be a daddy. You're a daddy. You're a daddy. You're a daddy. You're a daddy. Your mother, no, not like that. You need to teach your kids to fear the Lord, and I'm gonna tell you why those little kids push back on them teachers over there. Why those kids feel no remorse running into them stores and robbing everybody, amen, or, or carjacking people because nobody teaches them to fear anything. And the first level of fear in a kid's life should be the parents. And you're, you're raising kids in America today that little kids that can't talk are swinging and pushing on their kid, on their parents. I've, I've, I've already seen that. You don't push on me, little man, little boy. Uh, my staff, they would always, I had to tell them, look, man, I, I get it. I'm, I'm really with you, believe it or not. But what you're saying in front of the camera and all this stuff, you're living in a, in, in, in a bad society today. They'll never side with you. They'll side with the kid every single time. 
But them kids say, those guys would get mad at the kids, man, and they would say stuff like, well, I was looking for a job when I came here, and, and they would say, you could, you, could, you could take my badge, and they want to go after them kids. And, and I believe, you know what? That's natural because the way these kids are being brought up today, you're not teaching them to fear anything. So they don't fear parents at all, and they're all over the map. And then by the time you take them to a school like over here up the road, they should have already been potty trained and learn how to sit down already. And then when then the teacher says, okay, it's time for a nap, they're not 20 minutes trying to convince the kid. And then when they get now they're just getting bigger and bolder, right? Now that you've got elementary school teachers that don't want to be teachers, by the way, and uh, you send them up to, a, to administration and they come back with a dang juice box and a bag of chips. And uh, it's, it's protect the parents and the parents and mama, usually mama bear. And, and then the cops, now they're involved with the police and they're going to grab a hold of the cop's taser or his pistol and then the cop's going to kill him. And the first thing that you're going to say is, oh, well, he was a good kid. And, of course, everybody else is rebellious like you are, and birds with a feather flock together, and you, you set your kid up for failure from the, from the cradle, amen? amen? And so we'll try to teach you here, or that Bible will teach you, you, you know. I'll try to tell you what the Bible says if you're interested. But if you ain't interested, God forbid, and I already know how it's going to end up, and that's the country you're living in today, man. And these little kids, they're growing up, and they got no respect for nothing, and they're hurting people, man. They're hurting teachers, amen, and, and, the, and the government and the faculty and the communist uh, school boards and all that stuff. They, they're into that money, and the love of money is the root of all evil. And if you think for two seconds, man, they're going to side with you, even though you're 110% right about how you did that, that you're gone. You get out of here. And then how do you know that? Hey, you, hey well, I, I just read the little note from the kid. Okay. It's here. Win them to the Lord, man. Sit down. Sit, 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 sit. See them teachers running around in their little high heels and picking up trash all over the place. I had all my boys sitting just like you did in front of my property. I said, this is our property right here. Everybody, boys, look over here. You see that little lady, little high heels picking garbage up. I said, what's wrong with that picture, boys? And, and, and five of them jump up. Go run over there. Take that garbage from that lady. How do you do that? You train them. But they don't want to train them. They don't want, oh, oh my God, what's going on? Oh, not the poor Curry. They're hurting people now. You, you have a kid. You were born with a kid, and he fits in your arms. You got, you, you, you're the giant in the kid's life, but you want to wait and, and just put that off. You can hold the kid right here and love him and teach him and talk Bible to him and, and sing songs to him, amen, right? Okay, you got little one coming. You should have Bible in there, sing a song. He'll sing you a song. He'll sing a song. We did. My wife was praying for our kids before they were born, man. My wife prayed for curly hair for our first kid. I thought, what are you doing that for? Why are you praying for curly hair? What does it matter as long as it has hair? I don't care. You can get a wig, man. And that kid had curly hair. He said, oh, that's nothing. Okay, see, you owe you little faith. You don't understand. Psalms chapter 34. Psalm chapter 34. Psalm chapter 34. Psalm chapter 34. Look at verse 11. Oh, I, I've already done with that. We read that. Are we on 86? Well, let's go back. Yeah, mark that down. That was like the second mistake all year. That's crazy. All right. All right 86 verse 11. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to... Well, that can't be. That's what I, that, that says, unite my heart to fear thy name. Look at verse 10. That's a better one. For thou art great and dost wonderful things. Thou art God alone. And then most pastors, they're not going to take you to verse 11. They won't do it. They won't tell you. I'll tell you. Say, where's the last time we'll be here? Well, at least you know. And what's happening in America today because these pastors refuse to tell you the truth. You refuse to go look it up and prove all things, right? That's what the Bible says. There are, these are going to be your indictments. Instead of a blessing to say, oh, wow, I didn't know. Now I know. And you say, oh, I ain't got no time for it. It's going to be your indictment then. Then they're going to be listing up all these indictments at the judgment seat of Christ. You were told here, 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 here. 
oh, you're just a fake preacher or false preacher and the black right. Islamist or whatever talking about, you know, the Jews are, are oppressors and all that. That's, that's, well, he heard it then, I guess. Those are, well, then, then Sister Soldier, whatever her name is, she, she, that's an indictment. Mm. Mm. Eternity is too long to be wrong. How about that one? All right, Revelation. All right, let's go. We won't be too long. I'll get you back to your cell phones in a minute. All right, Revelation chapter 3. Pray for my wife. No, I don't believe that. I, there ain't no way I'd be alive without people praying for me, man. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's see. Uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 7. He says, Unto the church of the field of, uh, of the on uh, Let me read in English. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write these things, saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that is the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. When God opens it, go. Don't ride your brakes. I know you're doing pumping the brakes. It's, I know you're like going through the yellow lights and the red. I, I know, but it ain't like that. You wait for the green light. You wait for the open door and then just go. And then when, when he shuts it, it's over. Don't be banging on it. You're looking silly. Your opportunity to do whatever he called you to do could be that you're already there to shut it behind you. And then like the Jews, you know what they kept saying when they were in the wilderness? Let's go back. He said, why are you going back? We go forward. Forward, forgetting those things which are behind, amen. We press towards the mark. That's what we do. We win it. We're winning what you already won. It. Like how many, how many accl acclimates do you get? I already read the end. You read books? Barely. All right. Look, look, he says, he says, verse eight. I know you works. I know that works. And behold, I've set thee an open door. He repeats himself, and no man can shut it. Amen. For thou hast a little strength. He thank God he recognizes that and has kept my word. There's the stipulation. So why is God leaning towards you? Why does God help you with this? Why does God listen to your prayer? Because you, my friend, thank you, have kept his word. And we do that here. You go to the church over there, and they'll be chopping this book up. They'll use a the King James Bible. Even now, not so much. But them jack legs that do, I would guarantee you 98% of them don't believe that book. They'll use it. They may even say in public that that's probably the most accurate book today. But as far as the word of God, which God promised in Psalms chapter 12, they won't, they won't acknowledge that at all. That way they got wiggle room to make up whatever they want because they're going to throw some Greek and Hebrew on you. And you certainly don't know Greek and Hebrew. Some of you barely know the English part. I, I'm with you on that. I got it, right? Uh and, and, oh, wow, he used five versions of the Bible, and then he threw in some Greek dictionary words, some Hebrew lexicons and stuff, and made, boy, Mr. Professor so-and-so, he's so astute, and he's a liar. Oh, my God, but he's so nice, he don't drink nothing stronger than butter will. And that, that's a liar. Yes, I know. Okay, and all sin and come short of the glory of God. Be careful. Be careful. I'll tell you the truth. You don't have to worry about preachers that preach like this. Well, I'll even help you with this. Read what I, I'm telling you to read. I can see your book, brother, all lit up, right? It's brighter than that light over there, but okay, amen. Uh, read your Bible. Ask questions. You're going to see God. You will see God. How about that? Prophecy. Is Bible Baptist? Oh, I'm not Bible Baptist. We're not Bible Baptist. We are Victory Baptist. Victory in Jesus. Yeah, we're victory battles. Let me prophesy. Do they prophesy over there? Victory? Yeah. Yeah, we use a book, though. A, word, a more sure word of prophecy. No, we ain't witches. Okay, all right. We don't read tea leaves. Okay, Rolling really, Paul, look here, man. Looky here. Looks like you, you, you don't work soft hands like a girl. Okay, all right. Revelation chapter what? Verse. Verse. How did I get on? Oh, I'm on nine now. All right. And hath not denied my name. Right? So who does that? Well, you'd be at work. And they'll be using your Savior's name in vain all day long. I didn't say grab you, Lieutenant. Mr. What did you call him? I won't say that because he'll come find you. Uh, I forget what you said about it. That's all right. Pray for the man. Prayer works. 
Prayer works. So 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 I'm I'm at the men's home, right? And there's the one dog, I, the one of the male dogs who's a dog, the, and they act like animals. They're animals, and uh, he fights off the other dogs. It's a male, I guess they're territorial. And there's a female there, so he's protective of the female. I guess that one, he wants that to be his wife for the day. And then uh, like like Americans do, you know how they do. And uh, anyway, uh, the guy's like, "Don't feed that one. Don't feed that one. You that one." Fights them all like that. And I thought, ah, sad, because that means you want to starve the guy? I mean, okay, so as we, I didn't call him out and, hey, man, repent. I, we, when it was time to go, Kyle already went up the road for nothing. But he, anyway, uh, we, we went over there as they are heading to the van to head out. And I was heading to my vehicle to head out. And uh, I said, hey, come here, man. I said, don't do that to that dog like that. And he's like, it was a super nice, he's like, Cause he was real mean, man. I thought eh, he want to grab my shirt or something, and then we're gonna wrestle. And it'd be like, uh, huh? Well, don't. And he was like, his whole countenance fell. And I went, oh, that, that was too easy. I said, uh, yeah, 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 man. They're dogs, right? And he says, yeah, they're dogs. And I said, oh, this is real easy. Which, how much more you got in your pocket? Twenty dollars here. And he said, uh, I said, no, man, feed, feed the dog, man. I said, let's do this. Why don't we pray for the dog? And he's like, pray for the dog? I said, yeah, kind of like Noah, right? You, you got them all in the ark. The only ones that give God problems are the people, not the animals. And they all went on the ark, so let's do that. So, so he went, okay. I don't know if he did or not, but I did. And then I come the next day, I didn't see Kyle again. He says he goes there, but I don't know, sometimes. And then I left, and he wasn't there either. I don't know what he did. Anywho, anyway, rather, it, I, I went in there, and, and there's the dog, all three or four of them playing around. I said, what happened here, man? What was the deal with all that? The dog's getting along with everybody. The Lord said, well, you prayed, stupid. You just told everybody that's what you, well, you told him, and, and you did. I said, so that works like that. So he's, and I didn't even trust it at all, man. I was right there by the dog. I didn't want to, like, you know, oh, well, we prayed, but he did it anyway. He did nothing. He was laughing. They're bouncing around. He, he, ha, ha. Anyway, verse 9. Behold, I'll make them of the sin of God of Satan. And, and now I'll close here. It'll be a minute, but I'm going to close in, in this section, verse 9. And he says, And behold, I'll make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews. That was that what it said? So, so you have here the obligation to read this Bible, okay? And then this Bible, through the power of the Holy Spirit and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, understanding provided by the Holy Spirit, will tell you, watch out for this. Watch out for that. Hey, look over here. And it'd be like the flashlight, right? Like a lamp up to my feet, right? And he says, there's going to be some that say they're Jews, and they're not. But they lie. Remember, people, with all due respect to you, you say, you trust me, don't you? Like, so what else you want to talk about? I mean, let's, let, yes, I, I, I'm supposed to, and I kind of do, but you have a tendency to lie. You want to say amen? It's rhetorical. No telling yourself. Amen, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Amen. So we, are, we, are fa- we, we confess our sins. Right. right. Okay. Let God be true and every man of Okay. So people lie. So how do you know they lie? <laughs> Well, a lot of people don't know that they're lying. So what's the deal between the, the Israelis and the Palestinians? There are no such things as Palestinians. They say they're Palestinians. There's no state of Palestine. There, you have, if, if you're going to be a Palestinian, there has to be the state of Palestine. These are called the United what? States. So you're American because we got 50 states. Well, 50. I don't know how many we got. We're going to probably have 52. Probably. It's going to be uh, one. No, Hawaii's already in there. So don't say that loud when you that like. Don't say it like that when you get your license. Cause they're going to pull you in another line. Uh, it's going to be Guam, maybe. Something like that, right? It'll probably be about 52, right? Four times 13. Is it? 13. Beware the number 13. Be careful. Uh, there are states. There is no Palestinian state. Right? 
So you got to watch out. People lie. News media, they lie. They say, oh, they're compassionate. When they lie, yeah, very. You, you've watched Rocky 1, and you cried at the end because he's yelling out for it. That's not his wife. That was the Godfather girl. The guy was whooping on, and then he got machine gun at the thing, man. That And then, oh, well, she showed up in Philadelphia. How'd that happen? She's an actress. She's not an actor, by the way. Those females are actresses. A waiter and a waitress. We're servers. We're all actors. You know why America has such a hard time differentiating between up and down, black and white, yes and no, male and female? It's because of what you've been doing to that book for the last 1880 150 years. 150 years you've been attacking. Well, you've been attacking the book since Genesis chapter 3. But you've been attacking that book, Christians, in your churches. Attacking the book, attacking the book, attacking the book, changing, changing, changing. Obama, hoping what? Man, uh, remove, remove not the ancient landmarks. You've already had everything established, and now you question this. You have everything established over here. Now you go back and say, oh, by the way, we figured it's been wrong for the last 2,000 years. Oh, you already all agreed that there was a God out there that created male and female. Male and female created he them. But no, they've now, they're, now there have been tap holes when they begin to begin, and then there are frogs with their tail tucked in, and now there are monkeys in a banyan tree. Oh, but you're the doctor with the PhD, right? So, so now we just change everything. Change, change the flag. That's all right. Change that. Take that down. Move that statue out of here. Change this over here. That's a guy and that's a girl. We're going to let the guys compete with the girls. And they're beating the girls. And the one MMA guy bust the girl's face in. Now, ladies, with all due respect, don't, don't, don't go into mixed martial arts. I don't know what girls, like, even from another girl getting kicked in the face, yeah. being pounced, they get ugly quick. Yeah. And you get punched in the face unconscious, man, and somehow that's, you, you think God's in that stuff? You think God's in fit sister with all due respect? You think God's in you fighting like a man? Busted up, all pushed up on the side of your face. I don't want my wife with a pushed up face, man. I, don't want, I didn't marry an ugly woman. I ain't going to marry no ugly woman. That's America. Crazy, man. Well, leave the book alone. The person that needs to change is you. Your attitude needs to change. Hey, man, this is the blessing here, right here. You, you've kept my word and have not denied my name. Now, there are people here, they call themselves some, and they're a bunch of liars. In this case, specifically, right, they're these Jews, and they lie. Behold, I'll make them to come the worst before thy feet, and to know uh, that I would have loved thee. Because thou kept the word of, of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. You're going to need that, by the way. You keep the word, and then when the temptation comes, he's going to help you with that. You don't keep the word. You ain't serious about your roles. Then you, I already know, and I don't even know you, but I already know what you're doing. You're tossed to and fro. One minute you're in, one minute you're out. Aren't you sick and tired of you? Until you get sick and tired of you and sick and tired of this world and this nonsense that goes on. But if you're afraid, you're like all, high, you know, you're all hiding under your bed in fetal position. And but because thou have kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them to dwell upon the earth. Verse 11, Behold, I will come quickly. Behold, I come quickly, rather. Hold fast which thou hast. What's that? You got a family? Yeah. Hold it. Got a wife? Uh-huh. Keep, 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 keep tabs on them. Got a husband? And your wife, let's clarify this. Uh, you got kids, you got a church. Hold that, hold that fast which thou has it, that what? No man take thy crown. So remember we had, had those conversations that earlier. We'd be like, so can you lose rewards at the judgment seat? Well, it sounds like you could get a crown and then some, some, some foolishness on your part. You must have let something fall. And you let a man take it, however that works. I don't know how it works. How does it work? I don't know. But you let somebody talk you out of something. You let you let right. Do right and all your theology goes goes is, is matching with this book. And you let somebody either talk you out of doing something or talk you into doing something, I guess, right? And you had a crown. You did run well. It has to be something like that, right? Well, I, so what do you do with this Palestine 
Israel situation. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I'll bless them to bless them, thee, and I'll curse them to curse thee. You say, whose side are you on? God's side. <laughs> God's side. God's side. That's Israel. That's a wild man. He has hands against every man. So how you know that? Well, the Egypt could help him. All them Palestinians in Gaza. You know what the Egyptians said? Don't bring them over here. Well, that was the that was the independent war in 1948. All the 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 the, the Egyptians and the Syrians and Jordan and all that. And Jordan's made up. You you don't know that. All right. So Jordan's made up. There's the Jordanian, whatever they call him these days, prince, king, or whatever. He's saying, hey, on behalf of my friends in Egypt, don't bring they ain't coming to Jordan and they ain't coming to Egypt. That's your crew. That was a six day war. That was the uh, that was the e Egyptian president talk, rallying all the Jewish nations or the, the Arab nations, the Muslim nations to push the Jews out of their land. It's called Jerusalem. Where'd you get that? That didn't come from Mecca. That comes, you know what, what the Jews land deed is? This Bible right here. This is the one. You know why it's called Gaza? You know why it's called Jerusalem and Bethlehem and all that? Why that you don't have, why it's called Israel? Why you don't have to figure out let's rename you don't have to rename anything. It's already been there. Why is that? God brought them in there. And like Christians, when they don't do right, and you don't you, you don't keep his name, you don't keep his word, amen. The Lord's gonna disperse you. And you say, well, we're all the people, we're all the people. Well, we know, you'll know eventually. I don't know. I'm going to keep preaching the way I know how to preach. I haven't changed my way of preaching. You say, well, we're not going to get big. I don't see that it ever, the people that are really into doing right, there are not a lot of them. Even when like Gideon says, oh, we got all these people. You know what the Lord told Gideon? Hey, man, we got to whittle this down because I'm going to tell you how it's going to work. You get all these guys doing that, and then they're going to think that because you had all these guys, that's why it got done. That, that's how it got done. Uh, -uh Get 300. That don't make sense. What do you want me to do? I want you to walk around Jericho and uh, shoot them, uh, drop a bomb on them. No, you shout on the seventh day. Huh? What? What? Said, oh, yeah, they're not going to understand how, how you Jews in 1948, there were five Arab nations that came up against you and you had one plane and you beat them all. How'd they do that? God said, that's going to be me. You say, we'll call it common error before common error, and we'll get all the references. God, you won't because it's in your heart. God already put it on your heart, fool. That's why when you're about to get robbed or whatever, you're getting robbed or your car is out of control or you're having a heart attack at, at Wendy's, supersize it. Uh, maybe you got to cut back on the supersize there, sir. And the McNugget, the, 50, you know, the 30th McNugget. It's the 30th one that got you, eh? Probably the 33rd one, right? Like a Mason or whatever. And it, and it would be, uh, oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, they don't call Allah. <laughs> Nobody knows Allah's name, mom's name. They don't know Muhammad's mom's name. He's better than Jesus Christ. All right, well, I know his mom's name is Mary. Well, what's this guy's name since he's all that? No, you don't know. I bet you don't know. Yeah, that's Mr. Muslim. He says Muslim like that. What do you think? <laughs> anyway, all right. All right, so real quick, let's let's run 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 through a couple of things. Look at Revelation chapter two, verse two. So what we're gonna say is, look, there are gonna be people to say they're Jews. Is that new? No, no, no. Actually, it's not. Look at uh, Revelation two. Look at verse two. There are a lot of people say a lot of things. What do you do? The question would be then, Christian, what do you do about it? What do I do about it? Yeah, other than just blink. Well, we try the spirits, right? We we prove all things. That's that's what we're supposed to do. You say, well, I'm not used to it. We'll get used to it. How'd you buy it? You buy it? Yeah. Okay, did you have cash or did you the bank finance it for 30 years? What's the what's the rate at nowadays? Nine percent? Amen. Anyway, I know what happened. Before that bank signed off on anything, you had people going up in the attic. You had them. Checking the wiring, you had to check the plumbing, all the foundation and all that stuff. And you probably got a stack of papers with all these different mafia signatures. Uncle Uncle Phil over here and Guido over here. And you got to give money to this guy and that guy. And you got to stamp everything and all that stuff. And uh, you prove all that stuff. When you buy a car, you test drive the thing, right? But but with your soul? No, nah, we ain't got time for that. With your, with, with, with your Christianity? With your church, 
Like, why do you come to church? Well, I don't know. It was close. I go across the street. It's, they're good. They're good? What do they believe? I don't know. What's the name of the church? We run into that all the time. We'll be out there Fridays, handing out, hey, you go to church? Yeah. I know you're lying. But I didn't say that to him. We got pot smoke all up out of the car. Manny goes in the car, starts talking to him. How you doing that, Manny? <laughs> He said, I got my UA, man. I got my UA a week ago. We're good. I'm good for another 90 days. And he, <laughs> man, I don't know why he's laughing like that. He's laughing like that. What, yeah, I go to church. Well, what's the name of your church? Uh, you know, that one by the tree? You know, that church by the tree? No, I don't know. By the tree? No. Oh, what's your pastor's name? But he goes, he's the pastor of the church by the tree. All right, all right. Here's a good church, man. We'll we'll tell it like it is for you. All right, look at verse uh look at verse two. Revelation chapter two, verse two, right? I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are what? So are there people that are evil? Yeah, that's what it says. And thou hast tried them, good for you, right? Which say they are what? And are and found them what? They're liars, man. Oh, we're the apostle of the first miracle church of the tabernacle flower or something. Can you raise anybody from the dead? Huh? So anyway, Peter, I think it was Peter. Peter healed somebody with his shadow. But you gotta come to the church, you gotta do all that. Go to the go to the go to the children's hospital over there on the burn unit and then just take care of all that. Go to the cancer unit with the kids and all that, put all their hair on it, get get all get rid of all the chemo, and it then it is pipe pipe them out, man. Send them all back to Disney World or whatever, or Sodom, wherever that place is. No, don't send them to Disney World. Look at uh, Revelation chapter two, look at verse nine. Revelation chapter two, look at verse nine. Say, so what are we talking about? Liars. People lie to you. They're lying to you now. But but you're like, Americans, I noticed, they love that artificial stuff, right? Somebody gave me cereal, man. And I look, it was GMO and fake this and fake that. And they say, here, you eat it. I'm like, where'd you get that? Where are the berries? If you're going to get that, you get the berries. Because those are natural. The purple berries and the red ones. They're like green ones. This one had no berries in it, man. So if you're going to go that route and uh, purge yourself, you, you purge yourself with a peanut butter. Captain Crunch. Anyway, Manny will tell you. All right, look at verse, uh, what I say? Look at verse 9. He says, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. You don't think that, though. And I know the blasphemy, right, of them which say that they are what? Jews. And they're they're not. But they're look at this. They're of the synagogue of what? Satan, man, and and what you got, you got all sorts of uh, uh, people out there in America today, around the world, actually. They are running their mouth. They talk about, well, we're we're that group of people today. British Israelism, right? I, you, I'll, I'll just tell you who these guys are. Maybe you know who they are. Maybe you don't. But tonight you learn something. He says, British. They say British Israelism, right? Remember, we're we're here looking in the Bible, and God's warning you. Look, there's these people to say they're apostles. They're not. They're liars. How do you know that? You got a Bible. You prove it. You 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 make sure that what they say lines up with the book. You say, Pastor, we don't we don't agree with what you're saying. And I, my response to that is, that's not going to be the first time you've been wrong about stuff. All right. So you get that in a minute. British Israelism, right, is the British nationalist pseudo archaeological, pseudo historical, and pseudo religious belief that the People of Great Britain are genetically, racially, linguistically the direct descendants of the ten lost tribes of Israel. With roots in the 16th century, British Israelism was inspired by several 19th century English writings, such as John Wilson's 1840, R. Is Israelitish, that can't be the word, Israelitish, that is the word. Origin from 1870 onward, numerous independent British Israelite organizations were set up throughout the British Empire as well as Ustado Sonidos uh, as early as the 21st century. A number of these organizations are still active 
in the United States, the idea has given rise to Christ the, the Christian identity movement. The central tenets of British Israelism have been refuted by archaeological, ethnological, genetics, linguistics, and linguistic research. What these guys are going to tell you that they've been refuted by this King James Bible. Yeah, I don't need you to dig in there and find a coin. Let's see, he got a coin or nothing, and we're going to go to history. and all. You don't need that. Now, if you're a historian, which, again, I, I like history. I really do. Matter of fact, Brother Gene Kim's got a really good deal on history that he does, and, I, man, I, I eat that up. I enjoy that. I like to learn, right? I want to know more about it, but I don't have ten authorities. I have one. And then, doesn't that make it simple? Yeah. You're a Jehovah Witness, man. You got about 20. You're a Roman Catholic. You got about eight. Right, you you're a Muslim. You got the, you got as many as any Catholic has, or the Mormons. Right, they're all over the map. Those 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 TR guys or those uh, professors at Crown College and all that nonsense up there. They don't have one authority. See the difference between us, a Bible believer, and everybody else. Let me ask you this: How many gods are there? How many mediators are there? How many lives do you have? But you got two hundred Bibles. How many brides does Jesus Christ have? How many brides does Jesus Christ have? Well, uh, he's not married yet. Uh, okay. Oh, excuse me. Teach Bible. Yeah, we're, well, in essence, we're the bride, right? We haven't got married yet. But in the Bible, we're already married, correct? All right, let's go with that. Because right. it says the spirit and the bride say come. So we're already there. You're already in the... Steven Spielberg got nothing on that King James Bible. Back to the future and stuff. It's already been settled. I know you got back to the future. You come from this Bible right here. This Whoever wrote this Bible has the ability to see things, has been in the past, is here in the present, and has already settled everything in the future and wrote it down for you. I say settled. Let's, let's just say he already knows. He's prophetic. So what separates this Bible from all the rest of the religious literature out there is the fact that this Bible tells you things before they happen. Scientifically tell you things that you didn't have the ability to be able to figure out Way before you had the ability to figure it out. Amen. Did they say the earth was flat first or was it a globe after that? Or what came first, the flat one or the, 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 round, or the globe? I'm just saying. Britain and the United States are inheritors of Jacob's birthright. Jacob will start us with, oh, America first. Make America great. Yeah, yeah. you stealing the Jew stuff too now. You got your people running around taking... Your, your Steve Anderson guy does that. He runs around. He got all these followings. They come into the churches and all that, man. Don't worry. We'll, we'll weed you out if you're in here. And, uh, and you're not welcome here. And, and you're a heretic. And it's all about stealing. Who's a thief? Jesus? No. No. Uh, the devil. You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you'll do. He was a liar from the beginning, a murderer from the beginning. He's a liar. And you got a Bible here if you take some time and you pray, you can pray, you can ask. The little Bible said in Luke, the last chapter there, he says, and Jesus opened their understanding to the scripture. So I don't understand the Bible. Do you read it? Well, no. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I'd rather just, like, just do nothing. Like a communist, I know, right. Okay. All right. Uh, a commonly held... Held British Israel doctrine is the belief that the tribe of Ephraim and the tribe of Manasseh can be identified as the modern day Britain and the United States. Well, anyway, both of them are full of Muslims, so I don't know what you do with that one. Over there in London, you know who the who the who the governor is? Or the mayor? He's a Muslim. All right, Muslim, my bad. Part of the foundation of the British Israel doctrine is the theology. Theological claim that particular blessings were bestowed upon three of the tribes of Israel, in that the tribe of Judah was to be the chief ruler, i.e., King David, and Ephraim was to receive the birthright, see Jacob and Esau. Uh, adherents believe that these blessings have continued down through the ages to modern times, and the British monarchy being identified as the continued blessings upon Judah. And both Britain and the United States, or Britain, Ephraim, and who was the one that had the idols and you're supposed to leave them alone? Ephraim. Pretty sure. And who the Mormons say they're them. Okay. 
one of them gets dang it one of them is not listed in the book of revelation when you talk about them deals it's either ephraim or dan one all right and uh the u.s is manasseh of course it is because we know america can't do no wrong as recipients of the national birthright blessings they cite passages in first chronicles chapter 5 verse 1 and 2 genesis 48 19 and 20 in order to support their claim that's all old testament theocracy man and we're in the new testament and we can read so all right, here, here, give you some of your favorite ones here, and, and, and I'll start with this, and we'll probably close with this. Let me just say you can know if you want to know. What, what can we know if we want to know? As much truth as you want to know. How about that? But if you're easily offended at everything that, gets, that God points out to you, then you got a ways to go. Well, what happens if somebody looks at me funny? I bet they already have in other circumstances. So, like, if you ever played the fool for a girl, it's rhetorical. Rhetorical. Sister, you ever played the fool for a fella, Prince Charming? Oh, because well, you were in the sixth grade, you just thought he was all that? Sixth grade? Oh, they're in the fourth grade now. Twelve-year-olds have babies. Little 12 girl, Little 12-year-old girl. In California, they say if you're 12 years old, man, we can take you out of the house, man, if your parents don't allow you to, to side up with the LGBTQ 666 group. That's America. Okay. The black Hebrew Israelites, my friends. You ever meet them? You ever been around them? Oh, you're missing them. You're missing them. You it? They do? But if you want to go, let's, you want to go with them? I'll go with you. Uh, you be the pastor. All right. No, I've been there. I've been, man. And they, about after three minutes, they're cussing you, man. Bad. They're cussing you, calling you everything, whatever. And, and, and they're the dumbest group of people, man. And it's just they get their point across through. Yeah, that's what they do. And I thank God at the time when I was at the other church there, I had my buddies who were behind me. I didn't. I thought I just wandered around. I seen them. I was all dressed in. Anybody that's got a dress in a Halloween costume? And especially a cheap looking one they got from the from the dumpster, man, all that material that they wear. It looked like, man, at least you could probably go on eBay and get something a little bit. You can go to Halloween costume and buy something a little bit more old testament looking. Cause I asked the guy, so you go to work like that or what's up? Oh fuck you, man, baby, man. What's wrong with you, Blake? I said, okay, so that's a no. <laughs> and he said, uh, black Hebrew Israelite. And then he had the Spanish dude with the camera. And I told the Spanish dude, you know, you ain't, wherever they're hunting, happy hunting ground, and you ain't going with them. That's why they got you on the camera, dude. It's just for this black crew right here that said they're these Jews. You are a Cubano, right? Yeah, but you're racist. Okay, I might be the racist, but you ain't, you're going, in, you're going into slavery too. And look on the floor there, and they got all the weird Rastafarian Jesus guys and all that. Black Hebrew Israelites, also called the Hebrew Israelites, the Black Hebrews, the Black Israelites, and African Hebrew Israelites. I guess it depends on what day it is. Uh, these guys are a new religious movement. Of course they are. Once the, 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 the church of Laodicean kicked in, you kicked out the Bible, the devil was having a field day with all your theology. So it, it was pretty simple, man. He was a guy, girl. That's it. Male, female, kids, kids are seen, not heard, got this, and now what happened? Somebody dropped the ball. Who dropped the ball? Who would do that? Who is it? Nathan said, thou art the man. Oh, really? Let's blame somebody else. There are new religious movement claiming that African Americans are descendants of the ancient Israelites. Some subgroups... Behold, I will make them the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Well, they're connected to the synagogue of who? Satan. Okay. But we're Americans. Like, I don't care that, that if you want to be a British Israelite or, or Steve Andersonite or black Hebrew, whatever you want to call yourself. I don't care that you're a man and call yourself a girl. I mean, step back. Why are you always so concerned about whether I accept you or not? You ever notice these individuals are just die hard trying to get you to accept? I don't care that you accept me or not accept me. I don't want those guys to accept me. Amen. Number one, 
I don't need that perversion coming to me and saying, oh, Pastor, you're the number one. Huh? I did something wrong. If I show up on the gay magazine, the gay pride magazine, as the, 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 the gayest, friendliest, sodomite lover, oh, man. Like, I don't, I don't know why you're so bent, hell bent on trying to get everybody to accept you. If you do well, that's what God told the first murderer before he killed somebody. He was all upset. Why? Because God didn't have respect for your offering, sir. Why don't you figure out what God wants to do that, and then you're going to be fine, right? But so you don't want to ask any questions because that's going to probably cause your lifestyle to change. Oh, you just said don't change. See, see, see you, you strain out a gnat. You swallow a camel, don't you? You all right? A hoof hanging out of your mouth, man. What's wrong with you? In African, uh, new religious, blah, blah. Some subgroups believe that the Native and Latin America are descendants of the Israelites as well. Oh, that's, well, you get to hold the deal. My bad. I Maybe mean, I got it wrong. Uh, they weren't they, anyway. He didn't have a uh, he didn't have a costume. Huh? Black Hebrew Israelites combine elements of their teaching from a wide range of sources, and I talk to them, and they do. They come up with all sorts. I mean, I like science fiction stuff. I, I, I was like, wow, that's deep, man. Because Jesus is one of the Old Testament prophets. I forget which one they. It ain't Jesus Christ. It ain't God manifesting flesh. It's one of them guys in the Old Testament, like Moses or something, or Joshua. It's him. So it was re they believe in reincarnation. To various degrees, the black Hebrew Israelites incorporate, they do, certain aspects of other religions. They do. They, they just, it's like a. Golden Corral. Pick it a Olive Garden, man. It, well, yeah. They got good bread over there. Some people say Olive Garden is not Italian. It says Italian restaurant right on top of the table. It's good stuff. We eat it here. Okay, well, don't eat it. Paul eats it. All right. Black Hebrew Israelites incorporate certain aspects of the religious beliefs and practice of both Christianity, Judaism, and they have created their own interpretation of the Bible. Well, that sounds like Christians. That sounds like Baptists, man. They just they just make stuff up. And other influences include, of course, it's the Freemasons and, and New Thought, for example. Many chose to identify as Hebrew Israelites or black Hebrews rather than the Jews in order to indicate their claims and historic connections. You want to guess how they feel about them Jews? You want to guess? They're anti-Semitic. No way. So the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, Mr. Palestinian guy, is over there bunking up with Adolf Hitler during World War II. So when World War I came and World War II came, there are two main factions in the Palestine area. The Bible calls it Canaan, by the way. It was the Romans who changed it to Palestine, right, to wipe out the reference of the Jews. But if you got the Arabs on one side and the Jews on the other, you want to guess who the Arabs sided with in World War One? They sided with the Axis group. The the, the well, I don't know if there was the Axis in World War One. It with the Germans in them, the Catholics. Well, I know why they sided with the Catholics because old old Mufti over there went over there with Adolf off Hitler. And so I find ironic that when all these narrow-minded bigots or these woke individuals from uh, Harvard. They're looking for all the fascists and the Nazis. You yoked up with the Nazis. Free Palestine, yoking up with the Nazis. But you're hunting the Nazis. That's Black Lives Matter. That's Antifa. That's all your crew. That you say you're trying to save everybody in this woke, woke whatever. And you're yoked up. That's the, the, the Pope yoked up with Nazi Germany. It, uh, the Vatican did not identify or recognize the state of Israel until 1996. That's a long time of denying the fact. The Russians over there, you need to look up a word called programs, 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 where they killed all the Jews too and they put them in gulags and stuff. And then you got sodomites for the Palestine. Gays for Palestine, homosexuals for Palestine. Do you know what happens if Hamas gets a hold of a homosexual? They kill them, they throw them off roofs. What is that? 
that's because the Christian that knows better ain't doing right. And God's not the author of what? Confusion. You're not to be the ones that are the confused part. You're not the confused part. You're the in the nose. But but you ain't standing your ground, and now the whole place is upside down. Woe to them to call good evil and evil good. He says the black Hebrew Israelites are not associated with man, the mainstream Jewish community. Uh, no way. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't acknowledge that. You mean them Jews up there, they don't acknowledge that. Do these guys acknowledge it? No, they do not. Just, just like the... The nation of Islam, with Farrakhan, right, and all that, Elijah Muhammad. The, the, the Arab don't, the, the Muslim don't acknowledge that. And if you've ever, if you ever want a, a good science fiction, like, like uh, what's the Dianetics guy? Scientology. If you want a good read, good scientific science fiction read, Dianetics is one. Oh, John Travolta, right? Your, your hero, uh, Tom Cruise, and all the rest of them. And uh, you read Farrakhan stuff, man, where the evil scientists on the ground creating the white people, and, they, and the spaceships are coming in. Did you say spaceships, like flying saucers or something? Mm -hmm. They believe that? Yeah. And they've got the bow tie on there? Uh -huh. That's real. Anti-Semitic? Don't worry. Don't you pile on them Jews, man. He said, I don't agree with him. God didn't say he had to. But you better pray for him, though. Why? Because they're blinded in part. They're enemies of the gospel. I'll, I'll give you that. I think that's Romans 11. But they're, they're beloved for the Father's sake. So, so Daddy's father saying, look, I'll take care of them. No, I'm going to help pile on. No, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. The offense is going to come, but woe to them. How does that verse go? Offense must come, but woe to them. The defense has come. The offense comes. Like, so don't you be the one that God uses to, to mess with that Jew. Say, well, let's join the clan. Look, my dad grandpa's Jewish. Say, why you got that up there? I don't know. It looks cool. It looks cool on TV. You look cool, man. You probably get some responses on that. But even with that, you know, with all due respect, that you know what star that is? <coughs> it's the star of Rim Fan. Rim Fan. Maybe I shouldn't say this. Eh, I'm sorry. Watch the birdie. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's two sixes. One, two, three, a four, a five, a six. And Hitler had him put that on there right there, that mark right there. That yellow star. Say, so what is all that? Uh, that's just what you want to know. I don't know. What, what you don't want to know though. No, 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 no. We didn't want we didn't we didn't we didn't come in for that. And you're over again. So you always write that time so you don't go over. Yeah, but you'd be on TV for what, seven hours at a time? You'd be skipping church and you're not reading Bible. And that's Christians in America. They don't read Bible. How do you know that? Go ask one. Talk Bible with one. If you're married, how you go back to that all the time? Because I think we can relate to each other like that. I'm married. Talk, try to talk Bible with your spouse there, man. It really works with the marriage. How you know that? Well, I'm pretty sure I'm at a 34, 35 year mark. Huh? Like she ain't here to know the difference. I don't know if it's four or five. She's sleeping. They all drove up there with a bunch of bunch of kids in the car. Hey, did you know? Hey, did you know? Hey, it's good to be saved. You got a good book, man. You got opportunities to do right. Lord's coming back. I mean, you know, they say, what do you think about when them rockets? I'm like, you so come, Lord Jesus. You say, what do you think about when them Palestinians, them, them Arabs, the wild man, come and steal the kids? That's uh, sad, huh? It is sad. But uh, no, there's also the last days. Perilous times shall come. Oh, okay. And scoffers walking after their own love, saying, where is the promises of his coming? 
You go to the Christian there, they don't know Jesus Christ is coming. Every time I talk to a guy, they're like, what? I'm like, cha-ching. I rejoice over your ignorance. Twisted? Am I twisted because I rejoice over your willful ignorance of the word of God? Yeah. Yeah, that is twisted. What's up with that? Uh, you're in the prophecy. I read about you. Ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Having a zeal of God, but denying the power thereof. What's that? The church, the Christians. Go talk to them. They don't know what's going on. They'll, they'll sit there for two hours and play music. Voodoo music. All that. And then they get into the trances. And then it's like, Jesus. That's the wrong Jesus. That, 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 you just fell on the floor. What happened there? You know the only time in your Bible where people fell backwards? Like these guys being filled with the Spirit. That's the wrong Spirit. That was when they were arresting Jesus Christ in the garden. He said, I am. And they all fell backwards. The only time you see anybody that comes remotely close to what these birds are all bouncing and falling all over the place is over there in the garden of uh, what guy? Gethsemane? That was it? Yeah. So how do you know that? Oh, because God talks to me. And I put my tinfoil hat and he talks to me. I don't talk to you like that. You don't got the app? The chosen guy with the with the black mark on his thing, the, the Catholic Jesus, the Jesuit Jesus guy. No, I read my Bible. And I pray and I show up to church and I talk to people that are interested in the Bible and I got married a good wife. And we we're we go at it. We're good. I mean we I say we go at it. We 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 do okay. We're doing good. We're enjoying ourselves. How about that? We're enjoying ourselves. Father bless tonight. We thank you for it. We thank you for the truth. We thank you for this book. We thank you, Lord. We, we lift up Israel. It's a tough stuff. I, I, I We know what's going to happen. God, there's going to be but a remnant left. And, Father, we pray for souls, Lord, that they get saved. Both sides, the Palestinian people, the Arabs, Lord, they need Jesus Christ, too. And I know, Father, they're just all these ignorant, prejudiced people out there, Lord, are just making a mess out of things and hurting people, Father, and then just all in the name of God and, and just a mess. And, Lord, just help us. If nobody else is going to stand, Lord, help us, too. So we love and thank you. We plead the blood. Pray for travel mercies, Lord. Pray for a good night. And I uh, pray until uh, we come again, meet again. Lord, uh, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. Man, a little chilly tonight. You a little cold in here.